I am aware that some of our younger catechists are working with those that are preparing for a revolution. They are young men that are becoming more and more conscientious about their situation and are convinced that the only option for them is revolt. The more unrest and action against the government, the more that the government is pushing repression. Now, Bill, I noticed today in the beatification ceremony and in the decree of beatification that there was great emphasis on the fact that Father Rother was a martyr of the faith and for the faith. And I think maybe that emphasis is meant to counteract a criticism that has been brought, for instance, against the beatification of Archbishop Romero and other causes of beatification. Whereas the critics will say, well, they were not killed, they were not martyrs of the faith, they were not killed because of the faith, they were killed because of their social or political commitment. How would you address that? Well, I, I, I believe that people or institutions that use that argument uh, probably haven't read the New Testament. I believe that they say that because of the centuries, and I hate to say that it's centuries, the centuries in which the powerful have nurtured the church to be responsive to a particular part of society. Uh, those who are wealthy, those who are powerful, those who have control, those who can do favors for the church, whatever it may be. It was because he was making direct attacks by the way in which he spoke about the sins of the world, the sins of, the, of power, the sins of government, uh, not being government who, that cared for the people. It's such an easy thing to criticize those who raise the significant parts of the gospel that have to do with the impoverished, with those who are beaten down, with slaves, what other things are that, all of the things that are repression. The option for the poor, the, the, option the for struggle the poor. for the kingdom of justice. And peace. Jesus doesn't say, be kind to the rich. He says, be, be caring for those who do not have, to, who are poor, who are held down, who are marginalized, who are crippled or ill or unable to do for themselves. That's the gospel, and it may also involve questioning social structure, questioning the things that cause slavery, questioning the things that cause repression. And it's so easy to criticize as being too politi politicized those who raise those issues in preaching the gospel. You have to be silent. You have to be silenced when you preach the real gospel. And I think that is what we learn in the life of Stanley Rother. Stanley Rother didn't preach the downfall of the Guatemalan government. He preached the lifting up of those who were the victims of the structures of, of that society. And he helped create organizations and, and means by which those who were the disadvantaged could become people. And that's what happens when you recognize what the gospel is, the powerful make the poor or the underprivileged or the powerless less than people. And I think that that was Stanley Roth, that's what Stanley Roth was preaching that caused 
him to become a true martyr of the faith. Peace be with you. Your Eminence, it is with great joy that I welcome you, my brother bishops, and all of the members of the clergy and the faithful from near and far who have come to Oklahoma to share this joyful celebration of the life and witness of the venerable servant of God, Stanley Francis Rother, priest and martyr. It is a special privilege to welcome our friends who have traveled from Guatemala, as well as the ecumenical, interfaith, and civic leaders and those who join this celebration streaming over the internet, on television, and on radio. Thank you for being with us. We have received a favorable opinion of the congregation for the causes of saints and the de declaration of martyrdom from Pope Francis. I humbly request recognition by the church that the venerable servant of God, Stanley Francis Rother, is to be numbered among the blessed. As a lad, Stanley Rother felt the calling to the priesthood. Little did he know that his growing up years on the farm would mold him into the kind of man who would make great strides when he volunteered to go to the mission country of Guatemala. We have all heard of his hardships in the seminary. It seemed he was better suited for manual labor, which he loved. So it must have been a real surprise, even to those who knew him well, when he not only learned Spanish when he got to Guatemala, but through his efforts that the translation of the New Testament was completed in the Tutu Hill language. After his second attempt at seminary studies, he was successful and was ordained a priest in 1963 by Bishop Victor Reed for the Diocese of Oklahoma City, Tulsa. After serving in a number of parish assignments, he volunteered to go to Guatemala. St. John the 23rd was seeking the United States Diocese to support the church in Central America by sending priests, religious women, and lay people to work among God's people there. Father Stanley loved the indigenous people and they loved him. In addition to his priestly ministry, he worked side by side with them teaching them many of the agricultural practices that he learned growing up 
in Okarchi, Oklahoma. During his time in Guatemala, the political situation was very volatile. The military presence in Santiago Atiflan was, was threatening. Many men disappeared. Many of the people took refuge by sleeping in the church at night. Many families were afraid to claim the bodies of murdered relatives for fear of retaliation. Therefore, Father Rother himself would gather the bodies and give them a prayerful and respectful burial. He also saw to it that the widows and children were not abandoned. His ways were very quiet and unassuming, but eventually he began to receive death threats and was told his name was on the death list. He made infrequent visits to Oklahoma. On his last visit, it was obvious that he felt the need to return to his people and no matter what the consequences might be. This was in 1981. He had been back in Santiago Atitlan for only a short time when he was martyred on July 28, 1981. His death was a tragedy for Oklahoma and for Guatemala. However, through his death, his saintly life has become known well beyond the boundaries of Guatemala and Oklahoma. And the faith of all those who now are familiar with his life is greatly strengthened, and the church continues to flourish. How grateful we are to Almighty God this day, the beatification of the first native-born priest and martyr, soon to be Blessed Stanley Rother. And having consulted the opinion of the congregation for the causes of saints, by virtue of our apostolic authority, grant that the venerable servant of God, Stanley Francis Rother, diocesan priest and martyr, who was driven by a deeply rooted faith and a profound union with God, and by the arduous duty to spread the word of God in missionary lands, faithfully living his priestly and missionary service, until his martyrdom should henceforth be called blessed and his feast may be celebrated in the places and according to the rules established by the law on July 28th, the day of his heavenly birth. Given in Rome on September 14th, the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross in the year of our Lord, 2017, the fifth year of our pontificate, Francis. Could we say that Jesus' love for the rich and the powerful was a challenge and an invitation? We see that in gospel passages, but it's very different from his love and identification with the poor and the cause of the poor. It's asking the rich to change, to be converted, as in the case of Zacchaeus, and uh, to get with the cause of the poor. 
I, that's very gentle. Uh, I don't think you get crucified um, because you asked. I think he made it very clear that as it was God's command. Jesus is, is kind of reduced to a pretty weak figure when, when we, whenever we ignore the part of the gospel where he makes clear who he judges and condemns as the repressors, those who hold people down, those who steal from the poorest to make themselves richer. All of those things are truths that in polite circles we ignore. And I think that Stanley Rother recognized that he was not in those polite circles. And that distressed the military, it distressed the wealthy of the area, the, the, the privileged of, of Santiago, Atitlan, and beyond. And, um, we have to remember that in the period in which a martyr gave himself for the faith, um, more than 100,000 people died at the hands of the powerful. And it's nice to have a martyr who stood for the correct things and who preached and is now remembered by the church in this wonderful way. Now that hundred thousand would that be the victims of repression of the dictatorship in Guatemala? Yeah, just oh, in yes. Guatemala. It, it's probably Somewhere. a lot higher mm -hmm. because those statistics come from the general. So many people disappeared. It's hard to know what the exact figures are. The minimum in Guatemala is close to a hundred thousand that are identifiable. It's not the statistics. I think the, th the important thing is the fact that there was a sacrificial group of people, a group of people who died for the sins of the powerful. Well, Bill, I want to thank you for these reflections and I know that they come not only from your theological background and knowledge, but also from your many years of experience in working with the national, in the National Council of Churches in relation to Latin America. And also, as you've mentioned, your pastoral experience uh, directly in the Dominican Republic under the Trujillo dictatorship. And as you mentioned, you were on a death list there as Father Stanley was in Guatemala and your experience in Costa Rica and your close contacts and friendship with so many leaders of the prophetic church throughout Latin America and other parts of the world. I will say it's been a privilege for me, it sounds strange to put it this way, but to have known the number of people who will not be recognized, they are not going to have a great beatification ceremony for them, but who are as much the martyrs of the church as anybody who is named. They're in the thousands, and they are in, I would assume, in the millions if you look around the world. I think All Saints Day is an important day in the year when the unnamed martyrs and saints of the church should be in our hearts and our minds because they f any of us who consider ourselves Christians, they free us. And they free us to be truthful. And they free us to be as powerful as Stanley Rotha in preaching the gospel. We are grateful for your recognition of the heroic witness of this Good Shepherd. 
who chose to remain with his people rather than flee from the danger and violence that threatened to overwhelm his father. He gave his life in solidarity with so many suffering individuals and families who endured persecution for the sake of the gospel. We pray that the church, especially in Oklahoma and Guatemala, will experience a new Pentecost and an abundant harvest of vocations to the priesthood, inspired by the witness and aided by the intercession of blessed Stanley Luther. With the assurance of my prayers and profound gratitude, I remain sincerely yours in Christ, Most Reverend Paul S. Oakley, Archbishop of Oklahoma City. Dichoso el hombre que sufre la tentación, porque después de superarla, recibirá en premio la corona de la vida. 